I am so excited to show my new rig build of my Panasonic BGH-1. This is the anamorphic mode. This is with the Suri 35 uh, Prime anamorphic. Uh, it's a 1.33 anamorphic. And it goes all the way up to a 1.8. It's one of the cheaper, not, not cheaper, but it's one of the more affordable anamorphic lenses, 1.33 native to Micro Four Thirds, which is always a cheaper lens mount than other lenses. But anyways, I'll, I'll break down the whole, this whole rig here, show you the other side. I've done reviews of the BGH-1, did some test footage, reviewed the cage here that I have on it, this tilted cage, and compared it to other cameras. But this is more of just showing off this new rig, my new setup here. And uh, I'll do some test footage of, of just what this, what this looks like uh, using anamorphic and shooting in the anamorphic mode. I like to shoot in the uh, 150 megabits mode, not the 400. Uh, so that's a long gop, not the interframe. Uh, the first thing I like about this rig is you can, I can go handheld or go on sticks with it. And it's really easy to, do, to go to both. Got, got my hand grip here. Here's my follow focus. This is the small rig follow focus that I've reviewed as well. Show you the bottom here. This is the Kessler uh, Quick Stand. This is their smaller smaller one. It's got an Arca Swiss compatible already, native, native to the design. And it's got four feet here that uh, has a little rubber. So you can set this rig down and it won't tip over. It doesn't matter the size, well it matters, but with most lenses, they're front heavy, but this is perfectly balanced. And even if this wasn't balanced, I'll show you when I remove the lens, it still stays flat. It doesn't tip over because of the, the feet here. But first let me remove the top monitor here. This is the OC4K. It's not touch screen. It's, it's all with this button here. And I have a Tilta ball mount on here that attaches via cold shoe, which is at the top of this handle, this Tilta handle. And on the, on the side here, you can see I don't have a battery on here. I'm powering it through USB. It powers with USB with this battery. This, this is the uh, Flex Lion, Flex Lion, FX Lion battery i'll show you I'll, I'll pull this out in a second and through usb because it only takes uh five to seven volts of power so that's how i power this it's plugged in with one hdmi i eventually want to get an sd uh, hd sdi monitor maybe the atomos um shinobi with a that looks like the cheapest one of the of the higher quality but right now this is really light and it does the job. This is a regular USB-A and the USB-A outputs a five volt and that's how I power that monitor with this cable here. Just a regular cable, nothing special with this cable. Also on the top of this battery, let me remove the whole battery here. Small rig, this is a small rig V-mount holder here, cage. So here's the battery. This is the bigger one. This is the Nano 2. They have a Nano 1 that's half of this. And what I like about this one is you can see all of your metrics and all your power and all your voltage, all your information here with the touch of the button. And it has multiple power options. Up here you have USB-A, USB-B, and uh, USB-C. USB-C also outputs a higher voltage. I think it's pretty high for, uh, higher than five volts. I forgot which voltage it is. Yeah, see so this USB-C here is 12 volts out. Another option I could use this for to, if I wanted to power the camera. Right now, I have the native battery on there, which powers this camera for a really long time. I would say three to four hours. But with this battery, if I needed to swap it, on this side is a DC. Now the DC, you need an adapter. So here's an adapter, this is from Land part, and this is a D tap. 
to DC, and this is the, uh, a DC that fits the BGH-1. If I wanted to use these powers together, uh, one of them could run, and then when this is drained, it switches over to the internal battery. And I'll put links to all of these things uh, at the bottom of this video. So I like that, and let me just put this back on here. When I initially reviewed this cage and this top handle, I thought this top handle was way too big. But now that I, I rigged out the camera more uh, and it's heavier, this ended up being a pretty good handle, top handle, and I'm, I'm gonna use it for, for this cage. Now let me remove the follow focus here. This follow focus I also had reviewed. This one's about a hundred bucks, but I think you can get it on sale sometimes for about 80 if, if you wait for some sales. And it's just a single rod follow focus, which for this is pretty awesome for the, for the price, the, at least the build quality. I remember follow focus systems being very expensive, like around $500 for, for one that would be like this quality. Now they're under 100. Here's the lens. Oh, with the anamorphic lens, I also have a diopter on here because the minimum focus distance is, is around three feet. So if you want to get close-ups, you can't really get close-ups unless you get these diopters. Diopters are, are like magnifying glasses that you put on. So once you put one of these on, I have a set of these diopters. Uh, you can get your minimum focus distance to increase so you can get closer to the subject, but then you lose your infinity focus. And I forgot which brand this is, but I got a set here of four different diopters. This one is a magnification of 0.4, which is pretty close. Uh, 0.1 is really what you need. 0.1 or 0.2. A plus one and plus two is really all you need. When you want to get really close, that's when you get a, a plus four. And this set also comes with a plus 10, which I don't think I'll ever use. That's, that's really like a magnifying glass. And these are just screw-on filters. The Siri here is a thir uh, 67 lens thread. So I just got the set that 667 because I'm going to just use these diopters for this specific lens anyways. See, when I removed this lens, this is, this is a really heavy lens, but when I removed it, this stayed, this didn't go like that. It stayed there because of this key, uh, Kessler, Kessler quick stand. Obviously, this is manual focus only, right? And it comes with these gears. I have a quick release on the bottom of this, so I could set this and lock this on a tripod, and then when I want to remove it, I could either take the entire rig off the entire rig off, or I could be very modular and only take the brain and, and the lens. So I have a quick release from small rig right here. So I remove that, and then I could just slide this off. I have a quick release here, and now I can ditch the body here, or, or the frame. That's gone. And then now I have just the brain like this in a very compact run and gun form factor. I could put the handle back on and I could put the, if I wanted to put the monitor here, I can just slap the monitor like this because you, you do need a monitor. This does not have any built-in monitor, so you definitely need a monitor. And I can just roll with it like this and go handheld. I need to get a stabilized lens. I wouldn't run handheld like this with the anamorphic because the anamorphic has no stabilization. This camera has no built-in stabilization either. So you either have to have the right technique or have some kind of stabilizer rig. And But look at this, how, how fun and easy and simple this system is. I really like this. So let me go back on to my quick release here that just slides in. Slides in from the top, lock it in, and snaps in. It's locked in there. I have it pretty close to the battery, purposefully, so I can keep it, keep it contained. And there you go. 
That's my new rig that I'm rolling with. And now I'm gonna show some just very quick test footage I shot with this anamorphic and some of the diopters.